Hi everyone, just answering this question here, which was asked on a different social media platform, and I'm not sure if they want to be named and shamed or anything like that, so I've just typed it out. Well, I've said this in um, a couple of videos before, that transition period from student to newly qualified nurse or newly registered nurse is by far the hardest part of your journey, I think. It was for me, it was horrendous, not to scare anybody, but it was definitely the hardest part and it made me question a lot of things and it didn't help that I'd moved to a new city, I didn't have friends and family close by, so I think that was a massive part of actually a lot of what was going on with me. Um, it wasn't just the, the job and the role and things like that. But what can you expect as a newly qualified nurse going into general practice? So in any role, you should be really shadowing somebody for a good couple of weeks at least, just to get your head around everything, the system, the process, everything that, that's happening. Hopefully they'll get you to sit with um, different staff members as well. So sitting with the doctor for a bit, sitting with the healthcare assistant, the phlebotomist, admin teams, things like that. So you, you can see how the whole GP system works. That'd be a really, really good thing to do. If they don't get you to do that, ask if you can do that, because that'd be really nice. And then you can understand everybody's roles um, and that'll just make your life just so much easier as well when you're planning your patients and things. Now, every GP is completely different because GP is technically private. Uh, although they are funded by the NHS to do certain things and meet certain targets and things like that, and they get funding for that, GPs are very, very independent contractors. Every single GP practice will be completely different in how they run, how they pay the staff, the terms and conditions will be completely different from place to place. That's the first warning. So make sure you have got the right support in place wherever you're working just make sure you've got a supportive team they're going to be there for you you're going to have a mentor make sure that you're going to have supervisions every week when you when you are eventually on your own seeing patients make sure you've got that support around you because it's going to make such a difference when you've got that support person next to you your buddy that you can go to and say help i need you is just honestly a, a game changer so some GPs will train you differently to other GPs. Some will put you on the year long level seven fundamentals of general practice nursing course. Others will do in-house training and they'll get people in to do your training with you, like wound management, spiker screening and things like that. So it just depends on how they run and how they do things. You might be slightly different to where you're working. But you should still have some form, type of, Perceptorship type of thing. I say this because it's not really, I don't know what your class is a perceptorship. Um, I was just very fortunate that I did have this in place. I had a whole two year plan, I had extra support in place. I was, I had um, a really good document to get myself signed off different skills and things like that. And um, whenever I did new training, I'd, I'd sign it off, those little type of things. And having a really good structured plan will make a whole lot of difference as well. So if you are new to general practice nursing and you don't know this already, the Queen's Nursing Institute have got the most amazing general practice nursing induction template. If you literally just Google QNI GPN template, it will come up. It will be a, a whole booklet of things that you can get signed off. Use that as your perceptorship booklet. And this book is fantastic. It will just have everything in there to help you get started and get you settled into GP. I know a lot of GPs don't have anything like this already in place. So the template's there. Please download it. Please use it. Share it with your colleagues if, if they need it as well. So yeah, so like I said, the first things you're going to be doing is shadowing, getting to know the system, getting to know what's what in general practice then they might just start getting you to do little things that you can do so anything you've done and you are qualified to do already so things like you might be able to do injections because that's what you've done at university you've been signed off that already yeah you might have you might be able to do wounds because you're really good at wounds and you're competent and confident you've done it all at university um but there will be extra training that you can go on and do these things as well to get you extra competent get you extra confident as well in these skills um so even though i was trained and bloods I have to I had to do another training package as part of that and get signed off my bloods I did all my wound care and everything or everything basically I did all over again through the fundamentals of general practice nursing 
And then as you start doing your training, you'll be supervised again. You should always be with someone um, to supervise you doing things, signing you off on your book. And then once you're comfortable, confident and competent at doing these things you'll be let loose to the world and lastly if you go on the um, e-learn for healthcare there's a whole general practice nursing package on there just have a look at general practice nursing uh, but some little things that would be useful for you is the baby vaccines uh, package or immunizations i think the baby vaccines falls under immunizations package have a look at that it's all free so register go through it uh, make your notes and everything it's quite a long winded it took me two days to do the immunization one um so just go through it bit by bit and just get your head around the immunizations and baby vaccines and things like that there's other ones as well on there for things like cervical screening sexual health contraception checks there's absolutely loads so go and have a, a good look around and just do what you can bit by bit so I hope that helps. I'm sorry this is a really long-winded video, but I hope you've, this helps um, just prepare you for when you get started. And good luck.